Okay, let's queue. <sighs> F to S. I think the last F to S that I, or a part that I wanted, that I did was so, like, I don't know, I just wasn't happy with it, so I never posted it. X Drive M Sports. I probably won't be happy with this one either, but whatever. Okay. We're at B rank though, so I will just try instead of um, potatoing, you know? Okay, um, so we'll just do like my stand, I'll just play very, I'll play standard and like, depending on what build I choose, I'll try and explain what I'm doing. Uh, usually, I think maybe a lot of Terran players might have this question, like, oh, you know, should I Rax expand, should I factor expand? And uh, in general, it's just better to factory expand. Okay, guys, so just do that. It's just easier to play, or it's just a stronger way to play. Rax expand is a bit like it's just too risky. It's not too risky, but like it's just higher variance. On ladder, it's kind of pointless to play like that. Uh, as you're trying to get better, that is. You know what I'm saying? So with my building placement, it kind of depends on um, what spawn I get. In this situ in this location, I like building the racks right next to my command center because it's also kind of like in the direction of the ramp. Uh, but sometimes, like if the ramp is a bit out of the way, I don't like building my racks next to my command center. So I'll build it closer to the ramp and then build like SimCity with the depot. But on this uh, position, it's just nice, like this, because then you put your factory here, and uh, it's all kind of covered. You have like good room to micro, and you want your SimCity to be defending your uh, your buildings, basically. Because if a uh, zealot ever comes into your main and zones off your marine from whatever you're building, well, then they have access to your SCV that's building something, right? So you're trying to defend that. Okay. Uh, when I get scouted early like this, I will 16 factory by get, by uh, canceling an SCV. But if I don't get scouted, I will usually 17 factory these days. If you're 16 factory, you should be able to get your factory down around 230. 232 and if you're a uh, 17 factory it's around like 235 237 kind of depends on the spawn sometimes you can get really early yeah i'm trying not to uh, go on a long rant of like pointless timings here i'm going to i always go up to three marines this is the most standard way to open three marines will block any kind of harassment from Protoss, whether it's one goon or one zealot. And if it's a goon zealot, you'll have the vulture come in time where you can have three marines and a vulture plus SCV versus zealot goon pro. So this is how I play when I'm blind, totally blind to the map. Let's get the skip and SCV to start the depot first. Okay. That's interesting. That's probably the second Dragoon. But because the Goon is still in the base here... I don't need to start the bunker just yet. I do want to confirm... Oh, okay. This is weird. We can start... So we killed the probe. We know there's no... 
There's no probe out on the map unless they sent a second one. Okay, this next is just started. Let's start mines. Yeah, that's still within... So... Given what the Protoss is doing, 420 Nexus with double goon at kind of like the normal time-ish, it's very unlikely. Like, it's impossible for this to be two, two pylon DTs, but it is possible for it to be like DT after Nexus or whatever, so... I don't, I'm not too worried about my eBay timing here. I think if I just put down a turret, as soon as it finishes, we'll be fine. And uh, I will start an armory. This is how I play my TVPs, guys. Okay. Well, losing that, uh, losing that was pretty painful to the H. So the biggest thing you have to focus in these types of situations is just to make sure you're always making workers and making depots. Don't worry too much about like your factory timing. Don't cut anything for like a faster, a slightly faster factory. And mine bases, just, just get mines out on the map. Three the three vultures here. I mean, I made an extra vulture because. Okay, my factory didn't build. I made an extra vulture because my first vulture died. Uh, so I'm getting plus one siege, <laughs> and siege only after I got my second factory and plus one started. And next I will build turrets. And you just want to place them like I'm placing them one at the ramp, whatever you're main, whatever you're not. You can go for a three or four total, I'll get another one here. This is kind of the timing around 610. Continue making units. Um, given... In this type of situation, you should always have your units next to your main. Uh, because from here, my tanks can react to a shuttle going to the NAT or to my main. Okay, so pretty important to just have that down. Start my academy now. We got siege mode. I'm just gonna siege one tank. Add my knot to cover everything. Start speed and just chill. Just focus on my build. You notice how it's like very slow. Okay, my opponent was lost an observer. It's really kind of annoying for Protoss to lose observers because their robotics is actually really um, taxed throughout the game. You know, if they're making observers, they're not making shuttles. If they're not making shuttles, they're not harassing you. Uh, slight mistake, I should have started my starboard before my third factory. This is fine. It's still on time. Start my commsats. Around 8 minutes is a good time to start your commsats. And in this situation, I just want to go and kind of run around with vultures. But not all of them. Just a couple to check how Protoss is progressing. And now I'm gonna start my command center. And many, if you don't, you know, if you're playing like a slow game like this, it's okay to not um, take your expansion on location. Start that. Start that. And just mine up the bases, mine up the expansions. Scan Protoss, we see the core is not there, there's a citadel. So it doesn't seem too scary. Even though I have two add-ons, I'm still making only tanks out of one factory. And now I'm going to add more factories, just like this. Although I should have waited to start my um, my upgrades, but 
Because I haven't started my upgrades, I'm just going to... I don't know, am I missing a fucking SCV somewhere? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna cut tanks just so I can get my upgrades going. Most important is to start your weapons upgrade. And this is it, you know, this is how you TVP, guys. Super safe. Expand here. Rally units. My opponent's just playing like really slowly, so. There's an observer, snipe it. It's important to get your mines down as well. You guys have seen me lose a bunch because I didn't place mines. Uh, it's important to not get supply blocked, of course. But I'm really bad at this whole fucking commentating. Start my base as well, my next base. Now we can rescan just to see what's up. Okay, my opponent's not very good because this Temple Archive's very late. They've been AFK the entire game. Um, not really doing anything, so I'm not feeling too nervous. Just macroing safely. Around. I mean, it depends on, you know, fa factory explosion can always, like, uh, vary. Sometimes, like, you get a faster third base, and, like, you're not making as many units. But kind of this progression, how I'm doing things, is pretty standard. So, you know, if you guys just study the... Uh... Honestly, you don't even need to necessarily... How I like rallying here, by the way, is just uh, talking all my things. So the only problem, obviously, this game is I keep getting supply blocked because I'm fucking garbage. So if I were to look back at this game, I mean, it's clearly not not one of my best performances. You see, I was gonna say you don't even need to move around with your units. Kind of just sitting around and macroing is fine. So make sure you have a lot of mines at like the best locations. Start vessels as well. Here I'm just gonna take a couple tanks and make my way to my fourth base. Scan to see Arbiter timing. Still hasn't started it yet, so. This fucking uh, arbiter is never going to come. I never start. Oh no, no, that was my upgrade. I didn't never start my up uh, my armor upgrade. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't play this game enough to be able to commentate very well and play well. Okay, my opponent is trolling a bit. Most important part also when you take these types of bases to make sure that you start actually mining the gas ASAP because you're so strapped for gas. Okay, now that I'm kind of in a good position economically, or I mean uh, supply-wise, I'm just gonna run around with vultures. One gas. And to be honest, if I really wanted to be safe, I would just sit at home with these vultures. And um, mine up my bases. The reason why I want to get rid of some of these vultures though is because I don't have. Uh, too many tanks. When you have like a mineral only expansion, it's kind of hard to get a, a good amount of tanks. Okay, now I'm just gonna do what I would preach people to do, is just sit around. Just mine up your bases before you attack. 
Make sure you got turrets and whatever. Partly also why I kind of didn't choose the mine up faster is because I knew my opponent's like armor is like mega late. On this map, you can go and take this base as well. Okay, now it's uh, time. It's time to just go and push out, guys. Make sure everything's hotkeyed together. Actually, have a lot of units. I'm gonna push this way first towards my expansions. And if you have room, it's good to build additional factories at this point. I don't have EMP yet, I don't think so. Okay, we're just gonna defend. Most important part is to just defend first and foremost against units like this. And I'll leave one tank here, some more mines. Then regroup my units together just to make sure. It's all about focusing and making sure that your balls together. And then you generally want to scan ahead to try and, what's it called, EMP the Arbiter. Okay, just focus, make sure everything's fighting. Track this motherfucker down. Push towards my expansions. You just want to make sure that you ha you're always mining this Terran. You always have resources left to mine before you do anything in Remax. So right now my supply is a bit late, a, a bit low. So I'm just gonna chill. Leave a couple tanks here and there. If this game was really like contested, I would just be happy sitting on this side of the map and defending and putting mines and shit everywhere. But because I know this guy is like a potato, I'm just gonna keep attacking. Uh, also, it's good to scan for possible carrier transitions. And then you just keep your units together. Lay mines when you can. And run towards the Protoss' army always. Always like to fight the Protoss' army. If they try and like run around to counterattack you, then you follow them. And lay mines as you go. Keep them from using the same paths over and over. If you're good, you can try and like snipe these Templar before they storm. This is why it's important to have more factories, but, you know, don't lose too much time if you can't find a good spot to place them. And slowly pushing. EMP, hit everything, because the opponent's bad. And we win. My opponent's probably going to struggle the max at this point. And usually the easiest way to lose in this type of position 
is if you haven't expanded and you run out of steam. And here you just want to keep hotkeying everything. It doesn't matter, like, you, you don't need to have um, organized hotkeys, you just want to have all your units going together. Uh, also, Zealots, honestly, they do kind of like minimal damage to your uh, tanks. And actually what kills your tanks the most is uh, splash damage. So in some situations it is definitely 100% better to just unseize your tanks. And here I'm gonna run these away because they're actually dying. Fit more machine shops as you can afford them. Get a couple of factories here. Focus the goons, then I'm gonna unsiege the rest. So make sure you're always making vessels, turrets everywhere when you can. not clean uh, I can't play this game while talking man Thanks for doing this, man. Very helpful insights. Yo, Bichu, what's up, dude? You have you been, have you been playing it? Are you gonna qualify, dude? That'd be hype, man. I would love to see, uh... Almost crushed your dreams? Damn, dude. If I knew, I would've just left the game, man. Unintentionally, of course. My internet would've cut out. That's sick, man. I'm glad you're playing, dude. Maybe you should teach uh, Yuka not to be such a fucking scrub nub. Alright, this guy is... Uh, 
potato rank. But we'll uh, treat this seriously, guys, as you should. Run on my. <laughs> Damn, dude. Was he playing Terran? And, that, and you know you have to uninstall after that. Rune's already lost his passion, man. I haven't seen him stream. He went hard for like two days. You're working five days? Damn, you was here this whole time. Can't leave. How come you're talking so much shit, Bishu? What the fuck? Alright, so I'm basically doing the same thing I did last game. Oh, this is good for you, uh... You, uh, you can actually learn how to play uh, TVP now. Some people, um, oh yeah, this is a good topic to cover, I guess. Because I've read this in like Twitch chats from like strong Terran players. Uh, some people do like going 11 gas as opposed to 12 gas. Okay, so this is gonna be a Nexus first. Uh, cancel an SCV here. You wanna keep making Marines, that's for sure, but 16 Factory, first of all. Okay, two gate, two gate before core. You can shoot. Okay, I'll actually I'll show you guys the play how to play against Nexus first, without um. Okay, because this guy is also bad, but um, without rushing it. Okay, so that you can feel confident in playing against this, even uh, you know when you don't scout it first. So right now I'm not making any marines. And I'm just gonna go for 20 CC, very standard. Just the one Marine. You know, obviously if you're feeling confident, you can bring this one Marine to harass as well. But it, it's not necessary. And in this situation, I actually think probably making the Vulture first is good. But you can also, um, what's it called? Just get a machine shop right away instead and upgrade speed. I'm gonna take my racks and float it down. Start my depot as well. Keep making SCVs, it's important. Machine shop would have been really good too. But yeah. And then generally against this type of like very fast expansion, whether it's Nexus first or like no range or like gate expand. And Protoss is very uh, passive. So you can just kill a bunch of probes. It's good enough that, uh, actually, it's good to go mines in this situation. You can always go starport. And you don't need to proxy the starport, you can just build it in your base. We'll get a bunker as well because this is two gate and one thing that Protosses do off this two gate opening is uh, basically just rally units up here, like to your base. Make sure I get my fucking thing. Obviously like what you really want to focus on, which is like an important skill like overall obviously and it goes without saying but you really just want to focus on not missing SCVs. Because now, because our opponent went double gate and also obviously lost a bunch of fucking... probes. They're definitely going to be struggling to keep up in uh, worker production. Keep making depots. Here, like, if you don't want to chance uh, the mine hits, just kind of retreating and placing mines in front of your main is the, 
best way to do it. Because sometimes, like, some Protosses will just take, like, some clown path that you can't really account for. And you can just keep making vultures. The idea with making more vultures is that you'll drop, like, three or four vultures in their main, and you will send the other vultures to their gnat. And it's actually impossible for Protoss to have enough goons to safely defend everything. If that makes sense. So it, even if they know it's coming, it's just hard to defend if you're executing well. And I'm going to start my second factory as well. So you see I'm going to hockey everything here. And another part that is important to do with these, with this drop is to try and actually scout what the Protoss is doing because this is where you can actually spot like a Stargate or something. Okay, if you can get mines off it's good but there you go so he's going uh, carriers. And this is uh, no robotics. So we start making cloak and rice. And I can run in here as well. The mines down. Take this. Well, we'll just take a gas expo. Now, honestly, obviously, this feels a bit bad because we don't have that much gas. But our opponent is pretty fucked anyway. So I'm gonna make vultures for now. Go up to four fact. And now, now I will uh, resume making one tank at least per, like at least one tank production. And it's a good um, <clears throat> it's a good habit to make a couple turrets here. It's a good habit to just always be making depots. Even if you're kind of far from, like at this stage, you should have like two depot constant production ish. Okay, we'll wait for three rates and just go. Pull a, a couple SCVs as well. Keep making race and then we'll go. Attack against the against carriers. Uh, mineral only expansions are actually worthless actually worthless and also against carriers it's it makes a lot of sense to expand really far away and do stuff like ninja bases because it's very hard for the protoss player to uh, go and attack your bases that are on the other side of the map even if they know about it because carrier compositions are just insanely okay i should have gone siege but whatever And we cloak in and kill all these guys. And that's it. It's impossible for Protoss to have uh, observers when they do stuff like that. So. It was obviously bad for me not to have siege mode, but yeah. What rank are we at now? Okay, well, um, if you see my border here, it displays my current rank. But if you're unfamiliar with the color, that is the B rank. The player we just played though is was like D rank or something, I don't know. 
I don't know what that color is because I've never seen it. Okay, and now we get a, a nice A rank Zerg, Heisenberg. Okay, TBZ should be probably the easiest matchup for me to commentate. So it's very uh, straightforward. TBZ, I feel like, is. Uh, okay, no, he's out of there. Okay, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave a game, though. We can't. Uh, we have to give back. We'll combat inflation, okay? Take our sweet time with the low stress games. Okay, I'm no, just kidding. We'll leave a game when I, if I get like a shitty like versus E rank opponent or something, I'll leave the game, but I, I wouldn't want to play a TVZ. Okay. TVZ, I feel like it is it's the easiest matchup um, motherfucker, are you fucking serious? Yeah, we're inflated, man. Suddenly, this isn't really F to S. MC the Zerg. I will, I'll leave this game because I'm annoyed. Also, I don't know if I want to play Fighting Spirit. When you go Wraith versus two base carrier, he's just waiting on Cloak. Okay, so Wraith versus two base carrier, you do like the reason I went Cloak Wraiths that game is the only situation where you would want to go Cloak Wraiths the way that I did, and it's against a no robotics carrier. You don't have time to get anything else. Like if you sat there and like kind of built an armor. Well, actually, no. Obviously, if you didn't like. If you open with a starboard, you should go cloak. Like it's free win, because it's impossible for the Protoss. Okay, I'll leave this game because it'll put us down quite a bit. It's impossible for the Protoss to have a detection. You see, when they go double Stargate carrier like that, because it's very expensive. Like it's at a stage where. It's just like Protoss's economy isn't that great. To and and like double Stargate, double carrier is just insanely expensive. Like it's insanely expensive. Like the carriers are I, I don't know like, like what like three fifty two fifty or some shit. Plus six supply, so you have to build a bunch of pylons. You can't afford anything. You can't afford like you can barely afford dragoon range. You can barely afford dragoons. So when you see that they're going, but the carriers are insanely fast. Oh my God, dude, you can't even play this fucking game in this year. The carriers are insanely fast. So that's the only time I do go cloak. Like if you scout, nor if they're playing like a normal, like robotics build, like observers into carriers, you don't go cloak, obviously. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get another TVP, which is kind of annoying. I kind of wish I could get a another matchup, but on this map, it's it's good, I guess, because most Protosses will opt to do some kind of aggressive opening and like gas steal or proxy gate or something, and I can show you guys how to play against it. Uh, so what, what I was, uh, there was a topic I wanted to cover, some Terran sometimes ask or recommend I suppose to go 11 gas versus 12 gas and whatever. And for you guys to know the difference between 11 gas and 12 gas is that essentially 11 gas you can get kind of a reliable uh, 225 factory, 225 maybe 224 or something like that like very early. Uh, whereas the standard factory timing is around 2.30. So anyway, TLDR um, is just a lot faster. It, it's like 5 seconds faster for a slightly delayed SEV count. And why is that important? It's important because the faster your factory is, especially at the early game timing, the more leeway you have with busting... Okay, so the gas steals come... The more leeway you have with busting a 12 Nexus. 
Now, personally, I think people should just play 12 gas, because it's just... You don't really need to go 11 gas, because it's not that good of Protoss in playing standard. Okay, so, if you guys notice... So, my, my gas, like... Usually, Terran takes their gas at like 137 to 140. So when the Protoss comes in and like steals your gas this early, like this early, like before I even put uh, my my racks down, it's very indicative of no proxy gate, okay? But I do want to go scout, and what I'm scouting for is whether my opponent's going, like what the follow-up is. Is it like gate gas in their base? Is it just gate? Is it nexus follow-up? And we will adjust. So just keep this SCV on the probe. You have to defend this SCV, which is the annoying part about probe harassment in this matchup, is you always have to have an SCV defending your building SCV. So now that the Rax is finished, I will go and attack the gas. This is forge. Okay. Interesting, interesting. So this is fine, our opponent's gonna have a faster nexus and there's nothing we can do about it because uh, cannon totally destroys marines. But our opponent is also making forge and cannon, which is 300 minerals, right? So, and not just 300 minerals, but for those 300 minerals, like, that's 300 minerals of delayed gateway, so, like, their tech timing is actually atrocious. So, I'm fine with them having the super fast Nexus, because I'm gonna have nice a nice tech lead relative to what I should have, okay? Um, the other part is, you guys saw how I killed my gas? Never ever take this gas. Uh, you know, once upon a time, people like even pros used to just take the nat gas, but it's more efficient to just pull six SCVs to kill your own gas here and then take take it than it is to start mining this gas with because you have to kill this gas eventually. So now I have to be mindful that my opponent could make a zealot at some point. I did see that one. I'm gonna make a couple of uh, Marines soon. I did see that one pro move out, so I'm gonna like, uh, and I'm gonna play the safe mostly because I'm scouting around with that second Marine. But I'm just gonna go look for third expansions. Okay, so that's where that goes. That went. Now I'll show you guys kind of the uh, standard follow up here. Take gas whenever you can. Add on. eBay. And you can do this blind almost every time, okay? That's the problem with me being like kind of not very active currently is I don't have like my builds as on autopilot as I would want them and I don't know like whatever like it's, I have to kind of sit here and think a bit about it but so I can't really talk to you guys about possible variations but you can at least get a th this way this 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 way of opening with one add-on and mines like this like exactly what I'm doing this is very standard though a lot of the pros use this okay turret for DTs always Vulture's just gonna chill. I'm making extra marines just so I can have enough DPS to kill possible DTs, okay? 
After I start that plus one, I'm going to I'm gonna get Siege now. Siege is important to get early on because if you're, especially if you're doing this type of mine expansion, because if you're relying on mines to contain the Protoss, what often ends up happening, and we'll also start our turrets, the standard turrets that I always do, guys. If you're relying on mines, okay, actually my, I don't know what happened, but I believe those might, that might have been like DTs or something. Okay. If you're, okay, so let me finish my train of thought. If you're relying on mines to contain the Protoss, then once they get observers, they can just march across the map and attack your main, right? So you need to have siege mode by then to defend against uh, stuff like what's it called? Just just goons like walking up and killing your bunker, okay? And this is why you don't have to overreact, right? Like when the what the fuck is killing these fucking vultures? I'm assuming it's a DT. That's why you don't have to overreact when uh, Pardos is, when when players when your opponent is like just taking a random base that you wouldn't expect them to take. There's a reason that's not the normal base to take, and it's because it's just annoying to it's annoying to secure. And they already like my opponents already lost like 30 seconds for like to a minute of uptime on this expansion. So if I'm just if I'm just focusing on on uh, executing my build right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be ahead. Unfortunately, I, I barely missed that, but whatever. Also, I I could be. Uh, in general, playing a bit more aggressively here, but because I'm uh, commentating a lot, I'm kind of just defaulting to my normal playstyle. So we're gonna scan. Most likely, with like these types of DT openers, I'm very confused at what I'm watching. I'm assuming that's not for carriers. That looks like no range, so I'm assuming that's range, but. It is kind of weird for my opponent's range to be that delayed. But yeah. They are B ranks. So. Okay, now we're just gonna move out. Couldn't leave mines because eventually I'm gonna push out to take my expansion. It's really important to make sure you're always making units at this time because this is generally when Protoss will bust you. Okay, there's no DT here, I think. In around 10 minutes, this is where you want to put down all your factories, okay? Put turrets down as well. Notice how I put all my SCVs in position, just for it to be easier. Some cities, something you have to work on. Um, my SimSynergy is like fucking low IQ as fuck. Now I'll scan again, see what's up. My opponent, I, I'm assuming is just, okay. We, we see a bunch of DTs, so that's good, that's a tell. Most likely we'll have to be dealing with some kind of storm drop. I'm gonna have a third gas soon, so I'm adding another add-on. And because I know my opponent is most likely playing storm, I'm gonna also add a couple turrets here and there and try and put mines down so I don't get storm. The counterplay to storm is just having like appropriate defense. So like a couple siege tanks, 
at your bases or I don't know mines well placed and a bunch of turrets because if you actually limit the amount of time that Protoss has to basically unload and storm you it makes it very hard to storm and notice how I'm not being overly concerned with what my opponent is doing I'm just gonna leave a couple of vultures here it, this is like a mindset you have to cultivate as Terran is to just be very defensive just focus on yourself because Terran mech is very strong right but it's very like basically the way Terran loses is by just starting to crumble like let's say their economy gets a gets a damage or something starts falling apart so if you just learn to be very consistent with stuff like this we're just setting up careful defense everywhere and not take any damage and only after that start harassing then you'll find a lot of success so while I sit here and macro start vessels and everything I'm just gonna pressure the map so the way that my opponents set up here it makes it very hard for them to defend all points of the map especially against the mobility of ultras so we're just gonna take advantageous trades here set up some fucking mines okay more goons coming in here so I'm just gonna rotate and the whole point we can pick off stray goons here and there Bring more vultures to the rally points, or rally, uh, or bring all our vultures together. And this is just meant to buy time. I mean, to just do something while I'm maxing. It's also good to scan just to see what your opponent is up to. If they're specifically, you want to look for possible carrier transitions. Okay, now I'm just gonna go and secure this new base first before I attack and I'm aware I could definitely win this game like right away but this is again like this is the mentality you have to cultivate as Terran is to just take your time secure your bases first because as Terran if you have kind of un like constant stream of income um, as long as you have a constant stream of income and your bases are defended, so you, you don't have to worry for to deal with like things like counterattacks or drops or recalls. Then all you have to do is focus on the fights, and the fights are always like as long as you execute the fights well, fights should always go in favor of Terran. Always, always. Okay, mech is like insanely broken. It's insanely broken in this matchup, especially once you get upgrades. Now you see how my opponent's kind of posturing to go in the counterattack. I'm just going to send a couple of tanks here. Scan just to see if they are indeed attacking. Okay, they are. I'm going to take my time. I don't I need I don't need to do anything right now, but to take my time, okay? Try not to lose this. Just come here and defend. Of course, I don't have uh I don't have EMP because I'm garbage. Okay, and now this is, I want you guys to notice what I'm gonna do here. Before pushing back out, I'm gonna mine this attack path that, that the Protoss just used. And I'm gonna leave a couple of tanks. Okay. And now I covered that, that attack path. It's going to be much easier for me to just ignore future counterattacks. And because the opponent just lost a lot of supply doing that, they can't easily counterattack again. So now I'm actually getting closer to being in that position where I'm taking the fight that I want to take. Just take my time here, go straight to their main because if you're good, you will try and put down mines as well to. Mines basically limit how the Protoss can move around the map. I'm suspecting a possible counterattack. No, he's coming here. Okay. 
Look for possible EMPs. Nope. Still don't have it because I'm bad. Just keep your units together, macro as well. I mean, this is extremely hard to do. I've been playing this game for fucking ever, so I can do it, but it is what you have to do to play this matchup. Put that DT, please. Just make sure that my opponent isn't uh, going some kind of fucking carriers. And on this map, it's it's like a good plan to attack the main. Because uh, unlike most maps, you don't have other mains to take as Protoss. So they can't, um, they can't just build gateways at other bases. And you see, this is why it's important to expand before attacking, because like, now look at my bank. You know, I don't mind that, I don't really care that Protoss is still mining off of like, infinite bases. EMP this cluster of units, that's a lot of fucking damage. I don't mind that Protoss is mining off infinite bases, because I have the supply. My supply is never going down. So I'm not scared about uh, running out of steam. And now I can rally units down here. One thing I did slightly poorly, poorly this game was uh, my Goliath production is kind of lacking. You want to kind of mix in everything. Take the time to take another base. Uh, right, so come here. On this on this map, it's good to know this spot here for tanks, because they can range both bases. And now even if I lose all those units in front of the Protoss' base, I don't really care, because I'm killing a bunch of units for it. Again, not the cleanest uh, performance because I'm also just trying to explain as much as I can. But yeah, it's just really important to always mine as, as Terran. I mean, I, I feel like it, it goes without saying, but the, the reason I'm stressing this is so that in your decision making tree or whatever, whatever algorithm you you have in your head, you have to prioritize uh, expanding before attacking. So that you never run out of resources, so you can be perpetually maxed as I am right now. And a lot of lower level uh, Terrans don't take enough bases, especially in this matchup. <laughs> Okay, he's gonna come and defend the dead bases, and that's fine. Now we're gonna just take our units together. Again, notice how I, I don't have any um, any structure in my hotkeys. You just want to move everything together. Just make sure your entire army is together, and then you um, you micro on screen. So like, you know, control click a bunch of units uh, individually. Select so like tanks as well. Well, I should defend against this. I think this guy is actually trying to get his units together so he can actually recall. And yeah, I mean, a lot of this is just execution, as you can tell. <clears throat> How do you counter carriers? 
Um, so against carriers, it's it's all about timings, okay? Against carriers, it's all about timings. You have to use so theoretically, Protoss. If they like, let's say you were to kind of transpose. Let's say if you could, if you if you would be to if you could put the game into any game state, and let's say you just transpose a TVP to like a split map, Terran versus Protoss, where both players have like a certain amount of bank, and then both players have, let's say like Terran has three, three, like all the upgrades or something, but Protoss has like 12 carriers, and like eventually even some Arbiters mixed in. Impossible for Terran to win. Impossible. Literally impossible. And... Protoss, as they get closer to like 8, 10, 12 carriers, uh, it starts getting into unwinnable game territory for Terran. So the idea that I'm trying to get across is Terran needs to punish Protoss in their transition to carriers. And Protoss is insanely weak in their transition to carriers because carriers take a fuck ton of supply uh, they have to have like they have to have eight carriers for them to be really effective. Um, so they have to build up to a certain amount of carriers. So that either takes really huge upfront um, cost in let's say having eight stargates or four stargates, or they have to gradually build there, which takes a lot of time off of two stargates. So Terran has always against carriers always will have some moment where they can attack. Okay. And you have to capitalize on that moment. And generally, when Protoss goes carriers, their ground army is always going to be weaker than than Terran's ar army. So you have to know. You have to just be good at execution at executing that phase of the game where you're trying to punish the the Protoss. But if you sit there and like take expansions and try and macro against the carriers, you will lose. Okay, unless you are much better than the player that you're playing or you happen to be playing much better that specific game. Okay, it's definitely still hard, obviously, for Protoss to execute against a good Terran player because Mech is just insanely broken, right? And Goliaths are sitting around actually doing damage and stuff. Carriers aren't necessarily, like, invincible, but they are, like, in, like once you get, like, to a certain amount of carriers, they are very strong, right? So Terran has to do some kind of push, all right? If you can't timing push them, it's because you're doing something wrong. And it's hard to identify what that is, but I mean, that's the difficulty of playing Terran, right? You have to get over that hurdle yourself. That guy seemed pretty decent for B, actually. I mean, who cares? 2-1 versus 2 base carrier. So the idea is that you want to push uh, you want to push the Protoss player before they have so it depends. 2 base carrier with 2-1 like a 2-1 timing against any carrier build usually pushes around 4 to the 6 carriers, preferably 4 carriers. They'd be on the it's like on the verge of that depending on your optimization. So you have to hit at 4 carriers really ideally with 2-1. And if you're doing not 2-1, if you're doing like 1-0 or just like 2 base 5 fact or 6 fact, you're pushing at 2 carriers. It's not about giving uh, Protoss credit, it's just I, I don't, like what's the point of, like who cares how good that guy was? Like who ca who cares how good your opponent is? You're, you're trying to focus on yourself, like it... You know, like... <laughs> You shouldn't be thinking about how how your opponent's doing, you know? You should just be focusing on your own build. And I mean, is this guy good for a B rank? I mean, not really. I've, I've played B rankers that are much better. But why am I flame? Why am I, I, I mean, why am I triggered by that statement, I wonder? I think it's because I, I just find like it's such a it's such a pointless statement to make like like you sh you guys shouldn't be thinking like that you shouldn't be thinking about how good your opponent is I mean it's anyway it's normal psychology right like of course 
you want to constantly evaluate yourself and the thing is psychologically people want to see improvement to feel good about what they're doing and it's normal because if you kind of stagnate too much if you're like doing the same shit over and over and you're not really progressing just like in any anything in life it can get depressing or it can get like feel like a a waste of time or whatever right and so I understand the need to like be like, okay, I think I, I definitely beat a better player than usual or something like that. And I'm not downplaying the importance of that. But really, you shouldn't be thinking about how your opponent's playing. You should be thinking about just how you're executing the build, right? And here's, um, so here's actually a good example of why a lot of, so a lot of lower level players, um, they panic when they see very fast expansions, right? Like, and generally the, um, generally the decision making is very shallow or the understanding of the situation is very shallow. My opponent has a faster uh, expansion than me, therefore they have a bigger economy. Like that's generally how the decision, uh, how the understanding is at lower levels. But as you guys can see, that's not true. <laughs> Actually, my opponent is insanely far behind. Thirteen probes, right? And you'll know. I've you notice that most um, players at lower levels, and obviously this is normal. Um, they don't have like the most solid build orders, nor do they have the the, the best understanding of the build orders, right? So this optimization here, sure, my opponent has like, like if you look at this Nexus, it's much faster than my command center, but just look at the worker count by the time both of our expansions finish. All right, so now I start command, I, I started workers here now. So I'm ahead four workers, right? And uh, I mean, yes, this is because, you know, there's a couple things at play here. Obviously, I'm much better than my opponent, right? So it's not necessarily a fair statement to make. Uh, but what this does illustrate is that there's no like cheat build in this game, okay? There's no like one build is much better than every other build, right? There's kind of give and take uh, for every build. and it's hard to see the difficulties that your opponent is managing because you can only see the game from your own perspective, right? So as a standard player, what you see is, and especially if your mindset is, I want to play a standard game, what you see here is, okay, shit, my, my opponent's taking expansion. Uh, I have to catch up somehow because it's faster than mine. But from Protoss's perspective, like they're in the, they're in the dark, right? Like they don't know what's going on. Like they have to assess whether you're trying to all in them. They have to assess like uh, what kind of like if they have no scouting intel, what kind of, what's your follow up? And in so doing, most of the time, especially lower level Protosses will overly cut on probes because they feel like they need to get everything else up at the same time. Like, like we got to get our forge gate core up, gas up, pylons, whatever. Uh, and in trying to keep that parity tech wise, at least, generally or like even unit wise after an expansion because obviously like taking a really fast expansion uh, is a huge investment right like sure you might have better economy but you're going to be lacking in your military you're going to be lacking in your uh in your tempo or your tech right um so you you can't have it all that's what i'm trying to get at so it is very hard for protoss as well to be balancing this so like that's why the advice i give to most people uh, when they ask, you know, most Terran players, again, like I said, will look at this in a very shallow way. Just be like, okay, this, this Nexus is faster. I have to punish it somehow. And therefore I will pull my SCVs and kill the Nexus. That's my game plan. But really, I think you should just focus on playing the game and focusing on your build order and get better at your standard build order because if you have like a, a very solid standard build order and you execute that well, you can easily make up, like your opponent would have to be on the same level as you, as you are with your own build order to make up the difference, right?
So you see, I mean, look at this, right? Like, worker count is just exploding. And this is the only reason I'm even winning, is because I just make a bunch of workers. And my opponent's going to miss workers. Maybe not anymore, but like, this is a massive worker lead. And I'm not doing anything. Like, I'm just kind of following my build order. Like, I, this is just... I mean, obviously, I have a lot of practice in doing this, and it's hard to do this consistently every game, but... I think it's uh, easy to see that there's... So, for new players, I think it's important to acknowledge that there is... So, here's, here's the thing. Uh, in most games, right, the level of execution, the skill ceiling, is much lower than it is in Brood War, obviously. Uh, so it's easier to get to the level of execution required to engage in meta decision making, right? Um, so like in MOBAs, this is like, you know, laning, like once you, once you can like CS creeps or I, I don't know, like it, it's reflected in like people talking about rotations or whatever uh, and like kind of strategical decision making. Now that type of strategic decision making in, in StarCraft Right, like when you're talking about, okay, at this time I have to have this amount of units and I can uh, use them in this way. Like for example, how I keep telling you guys, well, at a certain timing, you have to keep your units at your main because that's the optimal place for them to be at to deal with stuff like drops. That's like a rotational understanding uh, of like how units move around the map and where you should go first and whatever. And you can only get to that point, uh, like on a, on a more macro scale, like with basically your overall strategic strategic or decision-making skills once you get closer to the mechanical like kind of ceiling which is almost impossible to get to in this game but you can get to a point where you're engaging in meta decisions right so like if you can't even make like the basic amount of workers that you should have consistently at like you know let's say six minutes six thirty seven minutes seven thirty eight minutes if you can't even keep up with like basic parity within one or two workers of like what you should have at a given time, it's pointless to think about strategy because you're basically missing out on X amount of units or X amount of infrastructure and you're playing at a disadvantage, okay? So like if you're like in the lower leagues, okay, and you're thinking strategically like this, like, oh, okay, my opponent's getting a nexus, I have to do something about it, you're going about it wrong because and if you get too close to parity execution wise with like what you need to be on uh, to play like kind of close to like closer to the ceiling at least you can easily get a rank okay a rank s rank a rank so if you guys aren't a rank at the very least you gotta throw all that fucking strategic decision making shit out the window and just focus on your builds and focus on your execution. Focus on literally just the blueprint, literally just your picture of how to progress your build. That's the only thing that's important to do, okay? And I hope that this illustrates it, right? Like my opponent went for really fast, like possibly the fastest expansion ever while simultaneously gas stealing me. So there's, and like getting a cannon. So literally impossible for me to, uh, do any kind of economic damage yet look i am super far ahead economically okay and i didn't do anything strategically significant okay so this is what you guys need to focus on doing all right went on a big rant there i hope there was some good information and again you know like my opponent's taking this base, I don't care. You guys saw I'm just kind of sitting in my base. I'm just chilling. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would have done that even against a better opponent, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't know what else to say about this game. Wait, did I answer that 2-1 doable, the carrier push timing thing? I think it did.
The ladder wasn't down today. What are you fucking smoking, dude? You know you can uh, change like your region and your BNet client, and you probably like can queue. Like sometimes it's down for North America or like your. I don't know if it's down for Europe because I'm never on Europe, but sometimes it's down for North America, and I just switch my client to Asia, and it's up. So I think it's probably like I don't know. Fucking knows. Maybe it's like linked to Diablo or something. And Okay, so TVT. Now TVT is uh, probably the hardest matchup to learn, or, or at least to, to teach, because it's very like, it's very tactical, okay? Not strategic. So like, generally the other matchup, they're much more strategic in that you can kind of plan out ahead of time what you're going to do and like kind of follow these guidelines, but TVT being a mirror matchup and specifically being uh, so positionally based because of siege mode and stuff, it's very, very tactical. So it requires just like, just good skill, good management skill. That's really all it is. So it's very hard to teach. Because I can't just be like, okay, if your opponent's doing this, do that. If your opponent's doing this, do that. No, it's like, you have to kind of have much uh, a much more like intuitive based approach but i can still you know teach you guys what i do specifically and uh, obviously tbt is a lot like go even though i've never played go my entire life i have no idea how to play go i've seen the pieces and the board and it looks like a tbt Put a couple rocks here, put a couple your opponent puts a couple of rocks somewhere else. And those rocks are siege tanks, okay? Um so I'm just doing twelve gas again. Eleven rocks, twelve gas. never start this marine unless I see a, like a, an early SCV come to scout me but again you want to get 16 factory in this factory you want to aim for like 230 put it down okay that SCV is That's annoying. Well, it goes without saying, you don't want to lose your SV building the factory, but sometimes it happens. So, the safest way is to get two Marines here. My opponent actually went for. Um, Racks expand. Let's get in here. Let's get what's up. My my opponent's build is a bit weird. Generally, I don't think you would have. Um, Marines that fast, so I think he like kind of sacrifices factory timing a bit. I'll show you, uh, show you guys an easy way <clears throat> to respond to this. So we're just gonna rally tanks at their base. We don't need to get siege mode. And get a second factory. Siege mode is very expensive at this point in time. So 
So the idea here is to kind of play like how Protoss plays in this situation against Terran is to just go with the tanks and pressure the bunker. Um, you want to take this gas as soon as possible. Oh, and one thing to check for is to see if my opponent has their not gas. Because that's a tell for what they're doing. Okay, so they do. So most likely this is going to be Siege Tank, Star Forward follow-up. Or basically it won't be a, it won't be a 3 Factory Vulture, okay? I'm going to get Siege Mode now. Okay, my army did not build, which is a bit annoying. Okay, well, we can just run away. I mean, sure, he's gaining ground, but at the cost of an entire SCV line not mining. And now we take position. Want to repair these tanks, though? And now I show you guys how oppressive it is when you have map control early on in this matchup. So now my plan is to just kind of control the middle of the map. Get up to four factories here so I can start making um so I can start making some vultures as well. Get my vulture upgrades so they're not worthless. Slowly take the middle. You can't uh, overcommit on the middle like you have to kind of incrementally increase your map control as you add more tanks. Like, I don't want to overextend with the small amount of tanks that I have because then they won't actually be able to hold any positions. This is why you make Goliaths as well. Make eBay. You can kill the Wraith is massive. The Wraith, again, is basically... One Wraith costs as much as a fucking tank, so whenever you kill a Wraith, that's in the early game, it's fucking insane. Value. Because I saw my opponent actually go for Wraiths, I am tempted to get Goliath range right now as well. And you want to get Armory in a cat. Well, Armory here, you guys saw the build that I did, but two factory, Armory, very standard. Uh, but you want to also get the academy at some point and you don't want to over expand too fast in this situation because in TVT like let's say I have like a pretty good um, map advantage but were I to expand too early because my units are currently committed on the map it would be hard so let's say if I took the six six o'clock it would just be really hard for me to cover uh, my expansions, okay? Against stuff like Vulture of Wrath. So you don't want to overextend, especially when you're playing kind of like contain, contain E. I'm going to start my command center here. It makes the most sense. I'm already committed quite a bit on this side of the map. And now I want to... This is why... Uh, vultures are insanely important early game because they actually help you kind of maintain map control. Just put um, 
and mines everywhere. Also, I'm getting a starport because I will eventually. Okay, my starport's very poorly timed. I wanted to start my. My plus two as soon as possible, but it's gonna be a bit delayed this game, which is fine. It's okay. We can scan here and see what my opponent's doing. Looks like he has a control tower, so possibly has tanks. But it's a bit early. Uh, yo, Scara, thanks, man. It's a bit early here to make drops in this matchup. You can only really start ramping up the dropship production once you're. Uh... Okay, make sure you're focusing. Once you're on three base. Okay, I'm just going to move some of the units over here. Keep making units with my hotkeys. The repair. Take this base. I have successfully expanded, so I will also add a couple more factories. Get my shit together. Okay, if I was better, I would have sent all these units. But it's okay, can't be perfect. But we have more than enough here. And third add on is very important at this stage. Okay, now we're super secured here. Start this upgrade, this upgrade. Okay, notice how I don't have that much gas, but the upgrades are really important, so I'm gonna cut some production. Some tanks. To get my upgrades going. Okay, this can land. I can start, now that I'm on three base, I wanna start making, um, producing off of my starport okay it doesn't matter what it is whether it's just um, rates casually my opponent is really far behind so I'm actually gonna make rates I don't really think I need to um, When you have an advantage, like I do, it's much easier to play uh, rates rather than matching dropships because you leverage your advantage more. But I'm all, I don't need to overcommit either to the rate play. I can just make it off of one star port. Okay, well, this is gonna get cleaned up, but I don't care because I'm killing the SCVs, which is the important bit. Still making wraiths off the one star port. Of course, my opponent's actually making um, Goliaths. Okay, at this point, I could aim move my opponent, but just to show you guys how you want to progress and expand. This is a skill that you get better at the more you play. The more you play, especially once you start playing really good players. When I start playing like, you know, top Korean amateurs or uh, pro gamer Terrans, you're just so good at expanding, never missing SCVs. Uh, these types of drops are never scary because it turns out that uh, <laughs> when you only drop like with two drops, you can actually just fight with your SCVs. You see? And now is when like I've hit kind of the uh, solid SCV count that my resources are shooting up. This is where you just want to spam command center and spam turrets everywhere. Okay. 
and uh, don't be afraid to kind of over make SCVs in this matchup. And notice how my starport hasn't rested. The most important part is to just. Now I have plus two as well. The most important part is just kind of uh, use your gas. Focus fire the tanks. And here is also around when you want to start getting into fuck ton more, well, machine shops, but I've yet to get my, what's it called? Uh, I probably don't need to over commit. Okay, just take your time. This is another skill that's like pretty important to work on as Terran. Is with your um, like kind of taking positions with your tanks, but not moving them again to like just using your reinforcements to go and kind of pressure a spot, you know? Shooting uphill thing, not that big of a downside for tanks like other units. Oh no, it's definitely a huge down. It's definitely noticeable. It's 100% noticeable. But I mean, that game, I just had more shit than my opponent. You understand? Can I explain how that game was more tactics than strategy? I mean, you guys have to understand the definite, like the semantics of tactics versus strategy. Tactics is more like immediate decision making, whereas strategy is like long term decision making. So like. Let's say like a, a unit composition or like a build order or like a general plan. That's what strategy is. Tactics is like actually microing or like actually responding immediately to what's happening on the battlefield or whatever in the game. So tactically, like everything that has to do, well, it, okay, it, it depends. To some extent, once you play a lot and you rehearse some of these situations a lot, especially let's say in like TVT, then stuff like tank positioning can be strategy because you've played it, you've played a map in a certain situation so many times that you know where the optimal positioning of the tanks is and you kind of just do it naturally. And in that case, it's strategy. But in the case where if your opponent kind of commits on this side of the map more or commits on this side of the map more and you're reacting like, for example, like this, this is, it can be both tactical or strategical depending on how, for me in this case, it was tactical because I'm not really, um, uh, I don't play enough to have this rehearsed down to a T. It's like borderline both. Like I kind of know what to do in a situation like this because I've played a lot. So strategically, the idea is to place tanks further up than when my opponent... So like in this case, I have more of the map than my opponent does. And that's a result of my the higher tempo that I have because of my factory expanding as opposed to my opponent's racks expanding. So that's like a strategic concept, I suppose, to a certain degree. 
but it's also the, like tactically it's because I'm reacting to what's happening. Let's say this is like strategical, you know, the idea of like setting up here to deny this base for me to take it and just kind of take this high ground. This is all strategic planning because I've played this map a lot. But if you go to here, like past this, like now, uh, it's all tactical, right? Like, cause it, it's kind of like once you guess get past the rehearsed stage, like again, maybe the mine placement is a bit strategic because I kind of understand that uh, what my position is and like this is how you would naturally follow it up. Vultures are there to put mines for the paths for which you don't have control over or vision over. Right, so in this case, this top side, I wanna track if my opponent starts committing over here, because of course I can't have tanks here, because that would be overextending and I would leave myself open here, okay? So this is also strategic, but then when my opponent does something like this attack, right? Like, so now this type of, uh, this type of situation is totally tactical, because I could scan and see my opponent kind of building up here and I have to react to my opponent building up here. So maybe the first four tanks here are placed out of like strategic necessity, but then tactically I might reposition these tanks. I might bring uh, reinforcements from here to defend this uh, rather than bring reinforcements to go somewhere else on the map. So that's tactical decision making. And for the most part, when you are uh, lower level, um, because you don't have as much experience, uh, none of this uh, decision making is uh, uh, strategic. It's all tactical. Okay, you have to like on your, you have to basically um, continuously decide where you want to put your units, right? Um, so it's hard for me to tell you guys like exactly what to do. You have to like figure it out for yourselves. Uh, but in this situation, yeah, like for example, like repositioning these tanks was tactical, like bringing reinforcements here was tactical. And so TVT ends up being this a lot of the time, especially like the closer both players are in skill, the more they have to react to each other's movements. Cause like, yeah, sure. Strategically you divide the map according to like, so the map, the map gets divided to a certain extent. Like for example, here I've set claim to this part of the map. Um, and that you can say is strategic, but then afterwards, once more units start uh, popping into the game, uh, it's all more tactical based. Like you have to know like, okay, where am I, where's my opponent moving? Where am I moving? If my opponent overloads on one flank, do I go and overload the other flank or do I kind of give up some space and, and defend the flank that my opponent's pushing? Anyway, all of that is uh, super tactical decision-making and TVT really, is mostly that mostly than it whereas like for example in tvp or like tvz or like tvp you know we were just talking about carriers there's a lot of people that had carrier uh, um um what's it called carrier questions that's all strategic understanding like that's why tvp is very hard to learn as a terran player because it requires a ridiculous amount of strategy okay uh, because you have to understand why you're pushing at a certain time, uh, what you're like, what you're looking for that your Protoss, that the Protoss player is doing. Like, so for example, me saying, okay, you have to push at two carriers or four carriers, or you have to do this and that with your build order. That's all like strategical concepts, uh, and you rely on those strategical concepts to play the game out. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, but everything I just said was so um, massive, big brain that uh, Flash. you guys should definitely... Flash, dude, or is it I love cock? Oh, big gypsum say ga ashi taku dasai. Yeah, yeah. I just absolutely laid down the fucking knowledge there. No, fucker. I can temp ban you though.
All right, let's try and get a Zerg now. I love getting a Zerg. Probert. Well, TVP is going to be the hardest matchup that you're going to have to learn. Uh, it's hard. TVP is hard because um, it, it just like it requires a lot of knowledge on the part of the Terran player and a lot of like abstract like just weird ass like mechanical like finesse skills but um once you get the hang of it it's like it, it's it's really like i mean Terran's insanely strong in this matchup and to be honest i think these days it's much easier to get good at Terran because there's some well at least for Koreans, there's a lot of uh, resources. For English speakers, not so much, but you know, maybe we can change that. Like once you know, like the basic, like the build orders and kind of the basic timings and the basic, like, I mean, that's the hardest part to understand. Actually, like, yeah, it, yeah. If you guys just listen to the jip, you will uh, become absolute gods at this matchup. Is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, like, uh... It is definitely kind of... The hardest matchup to get a hold of. Mostly because Terran has the, you know, Terran you have to play like, very defensively and kind of in the dark. And you have to have a good understanding of what the Protoss is doing, whereas the Protoss player, especially at lower levels, doesn't really need to know too many intricate things but i mean take it from me my my protoss like <laughs> my ppt is super dog shit and i have to like sit there and practice it a fuck ton um and i find it really really hard playing against Terran more so than than like reserve for example so it is uh it is a hard matchup especially once you start playing like remotely competent Terrans, like, and you realize how insanely broken fucking mech is and it just kills everything you ever have and you take one bad fight and your entire fucking army melts, or you max out with like a terrible composition and you're just fucked, yeah. Anyway. So scout first, this is nice, this always feels nice, I shall show you guys very cancer way to play here as Terran. And uh, yeah, big thing is to check for Zealot. Okay, I'm, I have my eye on the minimap. But I'm not making any Marines, I have full vision of the gateway. I'm keeping my SUV here. And the idea is that when the Dragoon pops, it has to chase my SCV or go to my to the front of my base. If it goes to the front of my base, um, I can just build a bunker and start making Marines. Bunker will be finished before the Goon gets there, and I will have full scouting information because it's ignoring the SCV. If it chases the S, this okay. Well, we got debated. My opponent's build is uh, not like n not good. I could have blocked this, and uh, I could have all in this had I kept making marines. But uh, I was too enamored, too uh, narcissistic, with attempting to show you guys. Uh, abuse play and now I get punished so there you go okay well that's fine our opponent will definitely have a small lead um, but this is um, kind of Nexus into uh, the, the second gate is really not very good um, it is Nexus into range so very passive, so we can take advantage of this by going starport. Could have also proxied the port to be honest, but uh, alas we did not. And uh, the second gate doesn't really make much sense because 
my opponent will actually be uh, contained by mines. So, yes, not good. Uh, make sure you're making SCVs. The mines down. Limit my opponent's movement. And now, um, if my opponent actually chooses to expand, as they are so inclined to do, uh, it's going to be very hard for them to um, defend all of these bases against my upcoming drop. So I will have a lot of freedom to harass and because my opponent will be playing so passively and I'll have a starboard and everything, I will be able to also most likely take my third base on location. Okay. Take this gas as well. So once uh just keep making vultures. Once speed finishes, I will uh, slam them in. Factory. This guy doesn't even have uh, robotics. Lost a lot of his. Send my tank out to die like a fucking brain dead monkey. Yeah, I mean, I'm not talking much because really it's just executing here. And to be honest, like, yeah, just interrupting mining for this long is a huge win. I actually just want to go for our timing here. So I'm not even gonna get a science facility, I'm just gonna go for solid timing. So we'll try and get up to nine factories. Probably cut out CVs actually because I just want to get all my shit. And when you go for this type of timing, now I'm, why am I going for a timing? Because my opponent basically like their early game is kaput, you know? So he's. He's kaput. Get turret so you don't get harassed. I will um, make vultures at some point. Or sorry, some make a couple more SCVs because definitely I would assume my SCV counts around 50 something right now. 
And you don't want to push until you're like 130, 120 supply with what I'm doing right now. We can also scan just to see what's up. The opponent has shuttles. We can get Goliath range for sure. Run around with these vultures. Get four Goliaths. I also could have kept harassing with the dropship, I suppose, but, uh, you know, I'm bad, so get plus one armor as well. And, uh, yeah, just chilling around here. And when you, whenever you do stuff like this, it's important to pay attention to those units and also just just make it as hard as possible for your opponent to deal with it, right? Like whether it's kind of send, sending the units to the back or whatever. So anyway, now we're at 130, 140 supplies. This is a good time. Why do I know it's a good time? I just play a lot. So I kind of know that this is around the supply break point that will be good for me to attack uh, given what's happened in this game. That's uh, something that I can't really explain easily. Why I know this is because I play, I've played a lot of Terran and Protoss and I kind of know this is how the builds match up. So I just siege up, put a couple of mines in front. Slowly but surely, siege up some more, unsiege. Okay. And then now we can get a science facility to keep upgrading. And take this base here. It hurts up. Somehow I lost all my glass. Get a second armory as well, GG. <clears throat> I don't think Artosis loses loses bad against Protoss. It's like his best matchup. I'm surprised at how underappreciated scan is. I can't fathom why turns with a sight of delay on spying on their opponent with no counter. Well, a guy in the chat. I understand that you were a guy in the chat, so you are probably clueless about this game. But as it turns out, one, the amount of implicit knowledge or information that you can gather without necessarily staring at your opponent's base is much higher than you would think it is especially the better you get at the game. And two, it turns out that it's very expensive to make commsats because the academy is expensive and cutting SCVs is expensive. So economically, it's not very good. Okay? So it's not just free map hacks. So there you go. What did I do my thesis on? Fucking your mother, dude.
Do I have tables you referred to or memorized for how many factories can be supported? No, you just play a lot and you know you watch what other players better than you do. I mean, technically, yes, like you could have that type of uh, knowledge. You know, like it would be nice if uh, we, you know, it would be nice to have like coaching staff that just sits there and like gives you all this math out shit on Excel fucking sheets and stuff. And there are some like in Korea, that type of knowledge does definitely circulate because I have definitely seen it. I have definitely seen tables where people like, for example, in PVZ, they're like this, this, this uh, progression of upgrades is optimal. And this is how many hits it takes to kill these units with this, whatever they have that shit. Now, do you think Big Jip is autistic enough to sit there and, um, you know, watch a bunch of replays and mathematically figure out all of that shit? No, because it's a giant waste of time for one person to do. You know, I, I'm better served just like playing more games. Okay, I'm going to leave this game because this guy's unranked and I don't feel like playing a TVT. I really want to get a TVZ. Is, let's look at this brood war bill orders yeah i mean these are probably really old but uh also i mean i i will preface this with um um i'm not the type of uh, i'm so annoyed that we're only getting tvp um i've always been um kind of like a very intuitive person. So I'm not the type of player that writes down timings or has like, and there are players that are like that. They kind of know like, okay, you get uh, this at this time. Uh, if you scan like the Arbiter or the Stargate or whatever, uh, and the Arbiter pops out, you've got like two, three minutes until recall. Uh, so I look at the game timer, then I do some quick maths. And uh, there you go. Like, I, I've never played like that. I kind of just have like a feeling, uh, you know, for better or worse, right? Uh, but I've always been more of a feel based, based player. So I just play a lot and kind of let my intuition take control, you see? Okay, so we can try and because uh, we've just been getting fucking Protoss all the game. I can try and do a Rocks expand in case you guys are curious about it. Fighting Spirit can be a bit hard. Uh, it can be a bit hard, but also a bit easy for Terran. This is, I should have sent an SCV much earlier than this, but you know, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter too much. On Fighting Spirit, you can find walls, because Fighting Spirit is so popular, you can find walls for all the locations. Uh, here, you put the depot here, and then the command center here is very solid. For example, like, how does Big Jib know this is the spacing? Like, you know, some players, they like, will line stuff up. Nah, Big Jib just, his uh, fucking brain just calculates it in my mind's eye, you know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of player I am, so I don't think that works for everyone, but I'm lucky that it works for me, I suppose. Now personally, if you're going to try and play this style, especially on the ladder, especially on a map like Fighting Spirit, uh, Protoss is also, like, you know, Terrans do tend to play like this, like, a fair amount. Um, so I recommend, uh, getting Marines and going up to 18, and only then putting down your command center, it's much safer. If you just put 16 command center down without scouting your opponent, you will lose games to, like, a random, um, you know, zealot walking towards you. So this is kind of the safest way to do it. And it's still very economical. 
It will feel bad if you ever play, you know, you scout your opponent and they're going Nexus first, then you're kind of like, eh, Sag, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, and there we go, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Make sure you don't lose this SCV. Is that guy? Oh, okay. This is quite bad for Big Jip. That's okay, actually. I think it'll finish. And we didn't lose the SCV. We got lucky. That was very poorly executed by yours truly. And to be honest, canceling the SCV there, okay, we're never punished, never punished. Canceling the uh, Marine there was pretty bad, because if this guy just rallied goons and like, tried to run by, we could have been boned. Looks like to me it's very possible that my opponent's actually going to proxy something outside here. I'm just gonna check. eBay is very early. I did see the goon range spinning and double goon like this. Very unlikely that the. Okay, there you go. Robotics it is. So I'll actually go for two factory. Um, this is something I've been kind of working on myself. Never mind. We cannot afford that. Can't afford that because I'm gonna be repairing this bunker forever. And I need siege mode as soon as this uh, machine shop finishes. It's okay to skip SEVs here because obviously we have a an economic advantage, our opponent's playing mega aggressive. The problem here is that my opponent will get a shuttle soon and will be able to ferry in Dragoons into my main before necessarily dropping the Reaver and I will only have one tank to defend. I'm not sure what he's getting ready to do. Okay. Looks like my opponent went for a two gate game. I'm very confused. Oh yeah, he did cancel that robotics. Okay, well, when you successfully defend something like this, a uh, good plan is to just go into 5 fact, so we shall do that. You will need an account, okay, this is bad. To just lose my eBay like this is kind of annoying, but uh, whatever. the academy f okay we lost the ebay for a goon so actually that's kind of worth to be honest <laughs> ebay is a bit more expensive though because uh your scv building it isn't mining but it's okay i will need an ebay again at some point okay so now is when i should build the factories So we're cutting SCVs here to build these factories. Keep making tanks. It's important to build your tank count up. Okay, 
Okay, our opponent, our opponent knows what's up, but we will have scans, so we will scan to see just how hard our opponent is committing to defending this timing. But uh, we can't, we can't go for a while, so we're just gonna chill. Make sure you're making tanks this whole time. Probably cut this one tank to get my. Uh, now we can start speed and then get this tank and then. And uh, you really want to go at around like 110 supply with this type of push. Scan, see what's up. Opponent's going for a Stargate. They're really far. <laughs> They're going Stargate Templar Archives. Mm. I do not believe that is going to work, my friend. So we're waiting for these upgrades before we go, actually against what my opponent is doing. Um, actually, 8 tanks is okay. Maybe we can go earlier. We do need... So, 8 tanks is okay, but we do need more vultures. And we can start getting an army now. Keep everything together. Focus the goons with the sieged tanks. I'm dead. Or am I dead?
What? Okay, that was uncomfortably close. Yeah, I mean, this is all, like, execution, you know, so... This guy was quite good to be able to defend that. It was one game? Okay. Surprising. This follow-up was uh, quite good for my opponent. He was able to get away with it because my build got delayed because of uh, turrets and stuff. Because I saw robotics, right? Like proxy robo. So under normal circumstances, like this type of third nexus can be punished like by a range of follow-ups from what I'm doing. But obviously if I'm like overreacting to something like a proxy robo, then it can't be, right? So here it makes sense for my opponent to have done this type of build order. And very fast speed lots. Oh, actually this is really close. I think my opponent was actually quite good, to be honest, like smurfing. Which is why this was so hard. But, you know, the worst part is I was doing this push without these tanks. So, yeah, this should have been even more uh, one. Saw Robo and what shuttle might be coming. You should make a few reens to defend. Possible goon drop. I had marines. I had four marines in my bunker. Right? Like, I have. Like, again. Okay. Um, so, when you're a potato. You think everything is possible, okay? You think your opponent can have everything at one time at, at once, right? But they can't. No, no, no. I know, Braveling. It's okay. I'm not. I'm kind of trolling. Okay, this is my stream persona. Okay, don't don't take a offense too much to it. I have Marines in my bunker, right? I even make an an X running up for Marines. Okay, so. If my opponent were to actually drop um, Dragoons into my base, it's not like they have two more. If, if they're going for robotics and shuttle, okay, which is insanely expensive, 400 minerals, like 200 gas or whatever the fuck, right, total. Think about that, 400 minerals, 200 gas. That's like four Dragoons, the equivalent of four Dragoons, the equivalent of like a Nexus, Whatever, you you don't come by that kind of resources easily early on, you know what I'm saying? So, what I'm trying to get at is, if my opponent has a shuttle, then they, can only, they have to move these goons away from my bunker. So it's like telegraphed, right? It's telegraphed when the shuttle is coming in this specific situation. 
So when I notice the goons, and like I know it's Proxy Robo, in my head, in my mind, I already know it's. I'm already anticipating the possibility. So you might think, oh, just keep making Marines. Nah, I just fucking remove a couple of these Marines and bring them up with my tank. And one tank, two Marines, plus a couple SCVs can definitely fight against one shuttle and two goons, right? So, yes, I was, like, but if you start making too many Marines, like, you saw how my opponent proxied the Robo but then canceled it, and there's no way for me to confirm that it was canceled or not. So if you, like, there's a point to which, at which, especially as you get better at the game and you play stronger opponents, there's a point at which if you overreact, uh, you start losing the game, right? Like, you can lose the game if your opponent just suddenly decides not to commit to whatever they showed you that they were doing. Right? I think it was a mistake for the four goons to not run by the bunker. They take shield damage and force Terran to pull boys off mining. What are you fucking talking about, man? Like, dude, guy in the chat 86, you're like critically guy in the chat right now, man. Like, you've had like several takes that have been just mind bogglingly stupid. What do you mean they can just run by the bunker? This is four Marines. What are they going to do? They're going to run by and what? It's four goons, dude. What are they going to fucking do? Do you know how fucking hard? So w what are they going to do? Like die? <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying. Where do you want them to go? Like I pull the boys and kill the goons. Then all of a sudden he's killed what? Like one or two SCVs? And he's lost four goons. What do you mean run by the bunker, dude? Are you a Terran player? You think like Protoss can just do anything and win the game? That's four Marines, man. You know how much damage this outputs? The shields go by quick, dude. And then you have to understand, it's not like goons, like you, you can't micro them perfectly. Like you can't uh, consistently kind of like move past and shoot and target fire perfectly every single time and not have one or two goons bug out. like. Imagine just, just two of the goons bugging out for a second loses you the game right there. But like, where's he going to run by? I already have four SCVs here. They would just fucking block the, the goons. Like, I, I don't understand. Don't understand what you're saying. But actually, yeah, I think it's troll bait. That's like a guy in the chat troll bait. I can't tell. I, I Actually, I respect it. If I got, if I got baited into this triggered answer then I res you know much respect holy fuck these tanks just chilled here the entire game that is pathetic Well, yeah, I mean, it is hard to, yeah, I agree. It is hard to deal with run buys. There's a lot of things in this game that are hard, right? Like they're very difficult to deal with. Um, but uh, some, like, some, t like, the reality is that, uh, you know, Terran can just defend, no, not trolling, just thinking what other decisions could have been made. Just having goons in your base can tilt players and then making mistakes. Yeah, if you're fucking bad. Which is fine if you're bad, but that's just bad play. So you have to just fix that and not die to that. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Like, I'm telling you guys what the answer is, right? Like, I'm telling you guys the objective answer to these situations so that you don't have to second guess yourselves. Like, you, ha you can go and confidently understand, okay, I just have to do this in this situation. And if it fails, it's because I'm not executing it right. So next time I'll do it better. And then next time I'll do it better. Okay. But yeah, I mean, a lot of Terrans would just crumble at some random run-by that doesn't make it the good decision to make. 
And I mean, conversely, if you're the Protoss player and you're making a habit out of doing these types of like Mongo plays that rely on your opponent uh, mis-executing, then you're building terrible habits and at some point you will hit opponents that don't die to that shit and you will hit a plateau and you'll have to you know sometimes like some people can't even get past that plateau like they've built like these terrible habits and they have this terrible understanding of the game where they're like every terran player gets fucked when i build a shuttle uh, and four gates and i bulldog them then all of a sudden you think that bulldog is kind of the standard uh way to play the matchup and that's all you do and then once you can't do it anymore you still try and do it and it's bad and you're forever stuck at bad in bad fucking bad gamer land. So anyway. Why are you not making firebats and glass? They're in the highest deep Yeah, it's true, it's true. One two DTs to four scans? No, because DTs are expensive AF. And I have scans. DTs are expensive AF and they're like worthless units. I mean, he could have, but I don't think it would have changed the outcome of this game. I mean, look at my scans. I still have three scans. I have turrets down. What if he makes Arbiter? Then Bunker is unnecessary. Can be skipped to save 100 minerals. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about mind control? Yeah. You're right, guys. Good take. Anyway, this guy uh, played... This opponent played uh, quite well. I mean, for, I mean, yeah. It was like perfect uh, probe saturation, good response to what I was doing. And I was playing, I was playing decently well outside of like these two tanks, massive throw. If I had these two tanks with my army, like we would have just smashed this, I'm pretty sure. Just goes to show like 